<laughs> well, Ren had a pretty good play at the dog park. Uh, she's been limp free for like the past week, which is good, but then we still have that vet appointment in Calgary uh, coming up just on Tuesday. So in a couple days here, it's Friday today. Uh, I guess more than a couple days, but anyway, um, yeah, she's doing pretty good. However, that was the first time that she's played with a whole bunch of dogs at once and wrestled a whole bunch uh, since the injury. That's definitely, um, yeah, I think the most she's pushed it. So we'll see what she's like. Um, she went to the dog park for the first time in like, well, I mean here, because um, she, she did go to the dog park in Saskatoon. Um, the first time we just like walked around, she didn't really wrestle at all. Um, and the second time it was super cold and she like ran around with a couple dogs. She like grappled, but she wasn't like wrestling, like, like, you know, on the, on, on her back, like whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, t yeah. Rebecca took her to the dog park the other day and she, she got a little bit of time there, but it wasn't like as crazy as today. Um. But yeah, I mean, they had like almost 10 dogs in there. Like at first it was just us and one other dog. And like, I always feel weird about filming at the dog park. So I try not to do it. Um, but yeah, when we got in, there was that German Shepherd and they played for a second. And then like a minute later, it was like two dogs, the three more dogs and two more dogs and another dog. And then like within like five minutes of being there, there was like eight or nine dogs. And then like another one showed up and yeah. Um, so she had a pretty good play. You did so good. Good girl. Uh, yeah, so she had her booties on. She was the only one there with booties on, but somehow uh, they got turned around like <laughs> on two different occasions and it wasn't the same foot. Um, they got turned around so they were like upside down or backwards. I don't know what you want to call it, but they didn't fall off. Um, so I don't know how that happened, but somehow that happened. Uh, I fixed one of them. The other one I didn't end up fixing, and then we left. Uh, yeah, anyway, we'll see if she's limping at all today. Uh, again, it's a good thing that she's not limping, but it sucks that... Now, we've got this appointment for some stuff that's possibly a, a thing, but the whole reason that we ended up getting the referral was because her limp wasn't getting any better. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. We're going to have a little adventure in Calgary, Ren. And we got deer. There's always deer here. This little stretch, always deer. I would say 90% of the time I drive this stretch, I see deer. Anyway, ran at the dog park. What a cutie. Look at all these teeth. Look at all these teeth. A little sharp tooth. Hmm? <laughs> Careful. Throwing all those teeth around. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Ow! <laughs> oh, careful. Careful. She's okay with my hands, usually. Is that she starts like searching with her mouth, but then sometimes she like bites me in the tummy or the armpit one time. Okay, saddle. Reading glasses challenge. Reading glasses reading challenge 2022. Last vlog I talked about what I did for the reading challenge last year for 2021. Uh, it was the first time that I did that. Uh, it's the first, I, I haven't been listening to Reading Glasses for very long, and my friend got me into the podcast, and they have this, this challenge every year that they do, where they've got five different books to read and five different book tasks, and I'm going to explain here um, what those are for this year, for 2022. So you can just like follow their podcast or follow them on social media, um, Reading Glasses, they are on Instagram, and they did make a post that has these on there. Um, and they had their episode already that, it, that talked about them a bit. Um, but some of them might need some explaining because last year and this year, there were a couple things that I was like, I don't know what kind of book that is. I don't know what you mean. 
So you can check out the last vlog that talked about what books I read for that reading challenge. And this is this year's reading challenge. So some of them are self-explanatory. Books to read. A self-help book. A retelling. I didn't understand what this meant at first. It was like a retelling. And they didn't explain it in that podcast. So I had to ask my friend. And he was like, oh, it's like if... So for, th for this example, like Alice in Wonderland or like a fairy tale or something that's like this classic story and now it's being retold differently. Basically a remix, if you want to call it that. Um, so, because I was, I thought of like, oh, Alice in Wonderland. Like I have the grim fairy tale uh, comics that are a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. Like they have a whole bunch grim fairy tale comics like that they do like whatever Red Riding Hood and, and just a bunch of other those grim fairy tales that they do a retelling. It's not, it is not just telling the story again in a different format because like Jane Austen, they did like Pride and Prejudice or Sense and Sensibility, Sense and Sensibility. Like I think Marvel Comics did it. It's just like, oh, we're just going to retell the story in like comic book form or it's like a paper, a trade paperback. And it's like, okay, hey, that's not enough. Like, you didn't remix it. You didn't change it. You just... It's like doing a straight cover. It's like, oh, here's a song that has guitar in it. I'm just going to play it on ukulele instead, but do everything else the same? That's not enough. Like, the retelling has to be different. It has to be like, we're taking a, a new spin on a classic story. So, like, in that case of, like, Alice in Wonderland, it's like, okay, she's an adult, and, like, it turns out that she's, like, schizophrenic. I haven't read them yet, um, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to do for this one, for the retelling. But, yeah, anyway, so that's a retelling. Um, you have to read the first book in a series, so I'm going to wait to do that until, like, November or December. Um, that'll be my last part of the challenge I want to complete, so that I can continue reading the series right after and finish it up, but read the first book in a series... Um, read a book by an Asian American or Pacific Islander author. That was actually really hard for me because I have over a thousand books and trying to find one that is like by an author that's Asian American, not just Asian. Like I have a small handful of books by Asian authors, but specifically Asian American or Pacific Islander. Like I had one that's a maybe and I can't confirm this author's ethnicity properly. So that might be tough. And the last one is a film adaptation. So, um, yeah, if your book has been adapted, which hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies are based on books, um, you read the book, and then the book task or book activity that matches that is to watch, the, watch a film adaptation of the book that you read. So, for instance, like Fight Club is a book, and they adapted it into a film. Uh, Shawshank Redemption, same thing. Drive, same thing. Um, we need to talk about Kevin. I'm just thinking of other things that I've done reviews about on my, my channel. Um, but there's just like tons and tons of movies that are freaking great and really great, amazing movies that came from awesome books. So, yeah, that is the fifth type of book to read is a, fil a book that got adapted into a film. So, yeah, the first book task watching the film from the adaptation or watching the adaptation from the book um <clears throat> second book task ask someone what they're reading pretty simple third one uh track your reading so you can do this some people have a book journal um i track my reading just through doing reviews and i do those reviews on instagram but also goodreads but goodreads in itself is a way to track your reading because you can like some people like update like where they're at like you can say like i've read up to this page i don't do that i just like update my shelf i have a shelf that's read reading and want to read and then a shelf that says own like these are the books that i own but um so yeah i have like a shelf that says this is what i'm reading currently and when i'm done that i move it to the, the one that says read so um yeah that's that's how i track my reading and the fourth one is a reading streak, 10 minutes a day for one week straight. So that is another task. And the last reading task is figuring out your reading pathway. This might take some explanation as well. So last year, they said figure out your wheelhouse, uh, which I explained in the last vlog, so I'm not going to take up more time doing that here. But figuring out your reading pathway is kind of similar, but it's, it's like 
what gets you into reading? What excites you just about reading in general? And so there's four different things. It could be language, it could be plot, it could be setting, or character. Like, what's the most important reading pathway for you? Uh, for my friend, it's language. He needs to have really good language in a book to get him excited about the book, um, to get him interested or just hooked in or whatever you want to call it. So I've done three of those reading tasks already. Uh, I haven't done the, any of the books yet. I mean, we're still in January here. But coincidentally, I already started reading a self-help book um, at the start of January. And so I'm going to continue reading that, and that's going to be finishing that thing. I'm, I'm already doing that, so that's good. Anyway, those are the five reading those are the five books, five kinds of books to read and five reading tasks or activities or whatever. Uh, yeah. So again, reading glasses podcast. I really enjoy them. Uh, these two hosts, they're, they're, they're funny. It's light. And again, it's fun and it's light. It's informative. And it's, I don't know. It's just a good time. It's a good time. And if you like reading and you enjoy reading and you like podcasts, I would give it a shot. Um, and, and let me know how you do on the challenge, um, if you do it or not, because I think it's just a fun way that pushes me to read things that I probably wouldn't have read at all, or that I would not have read right now. Um, and I explained that in the last vlog. So you can go check out the last vlog where I talked about the books that I read for the last challenge and, and stuff. But anyway, that's it. So we'll do another little <clears throat> video when uh, I get some new chairs in here. But uh, yeah, new new coffee table. Um, it takes up less room. Um, it'll be easier to move out of the way when I need the heat lamp right here. Um, but yeah, just uh, someone was selling it on the on the buy and sell on Facebook. I I went on there to post an ad for selling art, and I saw it, and I was like, oh man, like it's in really good shape. And um, that's the thing; it's smaller than the other table horizontally like but vertically i've got more room because like books can go under there now and then i put the blanket here um it also inspired me just to clean some stuff up so th this is a little cleaner um, i've moved some of the stuff like mugs are over there this is still a mess just because i'm working on stuff but then yeah i cleaned up the space under here a bunch too and then the ledge over there i kind of uh, compacted a bit and moved some stuff but yeah, this is still just a gong show and a mess. But um, yeah, until I get a bigger studio, whenever that might happen, if it ever happens, um, I've still got some stuff that just needs to go, you know, just like on the floor, hanging out, wherever. Um, but I'm, I'm happy right now with where things are at. Just a little cleaner, a little, a little more organized. And this is a much more sturdy table as well than, than the one that I had. Um, it's just so clean though. It's like so white. That's not gonna last long obviously, but yeah, maybe I'll cover it with stickers or something Anyway, uh, I like it. It's like the cleanest thing in this space because it's the newest thing in this space It also is like other than the walls. Oh, maybe that garbage can that used to be white. I was gonna say it's like the only white thing in here We won't be in the worst of the wind, but we can get a little bit of a walk in, and the way back won't matter as much unless it changes direction on us, which it does in Lethbridge, so I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, wanted to get ready for some exercise today.
degree um, so she can finally see that specialist that see what's going on with her limp and there's some other stuff going on too she might have some dysplasia in her elbows she might have some in her hips um, so we're going to do a consultation a surgical consultation and then they're going to do CT scans um, <clears throat> yeah so that was supposed to happen before and then uh, yeah just scheduling just wasn't working out and then Rebecca's vehicle broke down on the way there so uh, yeah finally getting it done today it's a beautiful day um, it looks beautiful my windows are super dirty so you're not going to be able to see it the way I'd like you to see it and I know from previous experiences when I try and film the mountains it, they're really hard to see through the GoPro but it's a beautiful day 8.40 in the morning. Uh, it is plus 6, but it is plus 6 because, of course, we've got, like, at least 50 kilometer winds. I don't know exactly where I'm at right now, but I, like, I checked just a, a minute ago what they were in Lethbridge, um, and we're, like, 40 minutes out of Lethbridge now. So, uh, yeah, at least 50k. It feels like more. So that's always fun trying to navigate in this area. Uh, there's a lot of like signs in the area that, that are like wind warning and like, I, I don't know. I've seen semis been tipped over from he between here and Calgary. I don't know on how many occasions. Um, not every time, that, not every time that I've driven this this way or from like here to Fort McLeod or from here to, um, I can't think of the name of the place now. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing today, and definitely had some challenges with the wind already, but the roads are nice and clear because of the wind, the Chinooks, and the temperature. Um, a worse combination would be driving with that amount of wind gust pushing you from time to time on ice and snow and slippery conditions, so thankfully I don't have that. Um, that's the one nice thing about the, the wind being a warm wind and being the Chinooks that we get, we get that, yes, even though that they're clear something, that's what I was thinking of. Anyway, even though it's like challenging and not the safest thing and not very fun, um, at least when they do happen, um, the roads get cleared. I mean, that's the thing. Like right now, there's not a lot of snow, like within like the last... 48 hours since the wind really started um, most of the snow has disappeared so again the roads are pretty good um, it's just the wind by itself is not super fun anyway update you later I have a really weird relationship with not just Dance Mix 95. I don't think it's a weird relationship. I just say that because it feels, I don't know, perception is reality. I don't know. I don't know why I say weird. Maybe it's, I, I have, how do I reword this just to be more, I don't know, honest? Every time I say I have a weird relationship with it, I feel like that's just like a weird qualifier and masking something. I have a relationship with, <laughs> with, Dance Mix 95 and early 90s dance music especially, but some that's a little earlier. Um, what's the word for it? A, a complicated, I have a complicated relationship with that style of music. Uh, this is way more serious than it needs to be. Um, I've talked a little bit about it before, but not extensively. and. Ren and I, uh, Ren's in the back, have, uh, obviously, since I just told you that we're driving to the vet, um, Ren and I have been listening to dance mix music, mostly 90s, a lot of it from 95, but some of it from earlier, and um, we're just listening to Kim Wilde, uh, You Keep Me Hanging On, and that just hit me in a certain way. 
and I just started to like draw a lot of parallels. So I mean, there's like some dance music, early 90s dance music, mid 90s dance music, that really has nothing to do with relationships and romance and things. Like Two Unlimited is a great example of that. Um, they've got songs that just have like those pump up songs, those like things you hear on jock jams for some reason like old jock jams anyway the stuff that still gets played at hockey games you know what i mean like there's that stuff that has like just nothing to do with relationships um romantic relationships and and things of that nature but i find a lot of that dance music that i really like i just kind of like drew some connections right now of like oh that's why because um I don't know, they just pair so well, like, I don't dance. That type of music, there are some types of music that really make me want to dance, which makes sense, because I think that's what they're meant to do, right? Whether it be these songs, or like some Lady Gaga songs make me really want to move, but I just don't do it. Um, if I was in private, I still really wouldn't do it, but sometimes I just feel it in my soul. Like, the closest that I get to, like, dancing is probably art is like making art I definitely uh, move when I have loud music and I'm making art for sure um, there are times that yeah it's an, it just I feel that energy and it moves through my body but it's not like traditional dancing um, but I, I definitely move while I'm making art um, move my feet definitely and it, it's you know, usually pieces I'm standing up for, like, I can't sit down, and I'm really into it, uh, but anyway, I drew this connection, because I was like, why, like, a lot of these songs, like, make me feel, like, feelings strongly, which is just this weird, which is this, I gotta stop saying weird, I think I'm in the habit of saying things are weird, or a lot of people might be in the habit of just trying to justify something. But also, I guess because I don't have the patience with myself to like fully explore what that true emotion or adjective to attach to the feeling is, and I wanna get better at doing that. That's why I keep correcting myself. So, I think what that is I get a lot of, again, those songs, okay, so the realization that I just made is a lot of these songs are about just moving on. Like, I was just, again, what sparked this was listening to Keep Me Hanging On, uh, or You Keep Me Hanging On, I think is what it is, Kim Wilde, with an E at the end, and I was just like, yup, look, that, that, that hits hard still for me, and, uh, and it's... It's also a dance song that makes you want to move, and I was just drawing this correlation between, like, wait, why are so many of these songs things that make me feel this emotional way, this, like, more sad, but, like, empowering? Like, it's this, it's this mix, for sure, for me, where I think that, that some people might just take the empowering part and just the, like strength part of like your of yourself and being able to move on and like trying to find um yeah the strength or courage or or i don't know will whatever it is right to do what you need to do and get right with your life and move on from past lovers and relationships and those that that may have hurt you or whatever right and i found just like man so many songs have this thing to them and a lot of those 90s dance songs like sometimes there's like this sad or dark edge to them yet they've got these very danceable beats and like um yeah it's just this correlation i made of like oh i wonder like if i was uh if i was more if dancing was something i grew up with if i didn't feel awkward and embarrassed by dancing and moving my body in that way then that would be a really good way to get it out I'm like I know why this plays at the club and why you know what I mean like I can just imagine this in my mind of like playing 
at, at a club in the 90s and especially women because I feel like the songs I'm speaking about um, oh my goodness yeah cool anyway sorry man that's what happens sometimes yeah um, there was a yeah there's a truck and then an intersection and then wind um, anyway that I feel like it's targeted more towards women a lot of the time and just like again finding that strength and moving on and being independent and whatever and I feel like man like I could I could see like why this is just like this is my jam and they're just going hard and dancing and I'm like man that's just a way to get it out like this is like a coping mechanism not a bad one at all like it's a positive coping mechanism and just a way to like exercise and get that out of your body like combining you know, I mean, that's the thing just about dance in general. It is like physical exercise, right? And then you top that off with like, just really just feeling that song and that emotion and like whatever. Um, you probably start to create some, some Pavlovian stuff too and conditioning yourself to like use this mechanism of physical activity to let go of some things. And I don't know, I was just about to like say like, oh, I'm just like overcomplicating, but this is what I do though. I, I take things apart and I wanna understand them better. Um, and this just happened to hit me right now. So that's why you're dead.